not just Doherty's here. You just told me that he did his list of best and worst franchises, and one of them is descending, one of them is ascending. It just feels right that you wouldn't have your your list together when when being extremely judgy, mind you, on other people. Now, well, first up, let's be clear. There's only actual, actually one list of NFL franchises, and that's the 32 worst franchises list. Because <laughs> the, you know, there's actually, as you know, no such thing as a good NFL franchise. Mm-hmm. The New England Patriots, no. the model franchise, and fall apart uh, instantly after they lose one guy. And so there's, that's kind of like a, <laughs> a like a, a myth, like a misnomer. There's no such thing as a good NFL yeah. franchise. They're only lesser bad franchises. I always go back to Seth Wickersham had this line that you just need to think of any, it was an owner to Seth. This is like 10 years ago. That you just need to think of every NFL franchise as a billion dollar lemonade stand. Yes. Like they really, they don't, they're like, oh, we have to, we have to like they will give a quarterback fifty five million dollars, and then they'll be like, "Hey, it's going to cost six thousand dollars more to sponsor this youth flag football team." And they'd be like, "Oh, come on, man, come and, on!" And they're always run like businesses that have like, even though it's one of like the richest, uh, almost like long. They don't have like a long term vision. So they're always run despite the long term success. Well, yeah, they're on like five year plans, basically like a lemonade stand because. You open a lemonade stand, you're like, you know, three or four years, you know, the lemonade stand craze will be over. We'll get out, we'll cash out. But it's somehow how they run <laughs> well, that's also why affect taking, them. That's also why they're taking private equity money is because yeah. the, the lemonade boom might end someday. Yeah, I, know, I know, I know. It's like, yeah, they're getting into car washes now that the lemonade <laughs> boom is ending. Um, I'll, I, there, there's, there's, there's a lot there. Um, but the one thing I'll say is that I've learned over the past, let's call it four years, maybe post pandemic, I've learned this more that planning in the NFL is for losers. Yes. Like we, like we think that like all of these teams have these grand plans and it's like, no. man, God, no, like August 5th, <laughs> no, no. these, some of these teams are like, Hey, who, who, who's going to stop the pass on our team this year? And then those teams win like 10 games. Or it's like, who's going to sponsor the stadium this year? Or <laughs> what are the uniforms going to be this year? Yeah, well that, well that happened one time. Um, I was at a commander's preseason game and the president was like, Oh, great news for the first time in years, fans can have any beer at the stadium. They can buy any <laughs> beer. And somebody was like, Hey, doesn't that mean you just didn't get a beer sponsor? And he's like, well, <laughs> when you put it that way, everything yeah, sounds well, bad. When you, you get it that way. angry, you can get angry orchid at the game. Now when, when we lose <laughs> yes, yes, by 20 yes, points, uh, I thought you were going to um, say that they were just really happy that they had a name that year. Um, the commanders. I don't think they did. That may have been the year. Things are looking up. We we almost got a name this year, uh, but yes, now you can have. A, <laughs> well, I know that the season starts in what is essentially fall, but you can get a line in Google Summer Shandy finally the next few. Hey, um, before we get to this, I feel like this is up your alley. Did you see the Steve Spurrier media hit today? I did not. He just no. gets every he gets everything wrong, and I just I could not have more respect for this. I could not have more respect for this. He was on like a he was in person, on like a Florida Gators in like person, like hey. remote like a remote uh, yeah, like yeah, at a yeah. restaurant like at a it's car wash or restaurant. Sponsors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lemonade. He, he he calls. He says Alabama's going to win the SEC. No basis behind it except that he likes Jalen DeBoer. His name is Kalen DeBoer. Yes, and. Uh, he calls him Jalen twice, like in separate things. He clearly thinks that's his name. Then he starts giving analysis of how Alabama was getting Texas early in the season. They don't play this year. And so yeah, it was, it, I, I, he still got it is what I'm trying to tell you. He still got it. <laughs> so let's say that doesn't actually sound that different uh, for Steve Spurrier. was speaking very broadly and brashly and confidently and still somehow well, just, ultimately right also, in the end. <laughs> still like get the clearly, broad the broad strokes so right it, so first of all to make this even funnier he keeps taking off and on glasses as if that's gonna help <laughs> and he clearly has a piece of paper in front of him that i believe if you use the context clues it's a list of teams in the sec but he's you just think steve just... spurrier knows mizzou's in the sec <laughs> no. he doesn't None no. of our opponents do. That's one. Never thought about it. He's never no. thought about it. I actually just saw Mizzou's coach saying we have to sell out Saturday's game because we're a top ten program. We so do. He's out. right. Murray State hey, Racers. Let's um big game. Big I game. Think it's huge. Um. All right. Let's get into uh, our our best and worst franchises. I I just going back to the the lemonade stand thing here. Like 
the 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 longer I go in the sport, as if I'm playing, but like the, lo- the longer I hang around the sport, the more I realize it's it's just mm-hmm. franchise based. Like you can have a nice two years. There's a real scorpion and the frog mm-hmm. thing with NFL franchises, where it's like, oh, and, and there's a couple of exceptions I'm going to get to, but for 99 percent of the time ownership and then GM and then how that connects to coaching is pretty much going to determine your fate. And you can get lucky on like <laughs> one draft that is a core of four guys. And then you have five years of like, we might win the Super Bowl, But then like one of those guys, you're just going to get in a weird contract dispute with, and then you're just going to, it's, it's going to fall apart very quickly. Yeah. And then Never one guy's more over. injured and it's over. And then like five years <laughs> later, someone appears on the <laughs> underdog fantasy podcast and is like, actually, that was the worst environment in the history of the sport. And I can't believe we won 12 games. <laughs> yes, That's more of a yes, basketball always. thing, but like, yes. but, but it's going to happen in football now more and more. And so it's like, you just have to, you're just going to find out like in five years that some of these teams are winning now, but just, they were just bare, They're holding the whole thing together with, with duct tape. So anyway, all this to say, this is a very important ranking. It is. Why don't we do, um, why don't we do five best than five worst? All right. How about right. that? Five, five through one. Who's your fifth? I so the, fi- the fifth board. best is what we're saying, not the yes. first best. Fifth, the fifth best team franchise in the NFL. It's the Pittsburgh Steelers. And honestly, Me too. Five, five. Their only problem is that they're too stable. They need to inject some like, uh, so they need to inject some instability into this franchise. When you, when you stay too stable, you do things like <laughs> we're, just, we're making the stability based pick at Kenny Pickett. Yeah. Like you might not like it. Uh, but this is what peaks stability uh, looks like. <laughs> Take the kid from down the road. No one else wants him. Yeah. I um, mean, he's a safe first round pick. He's going to be a, at least a five or six year answer at quarterback. Yeah. And then the next thing you know, don't get me wrong. The outcome is still the same. You're still somehow winning 10 games and getting the seventh seed in the AFC and making the playoffs, but you're doing it in far uglier fashion than you, than you need to. And if you were just a little less stable, there was a little more yeah. variance uh, then the Steelers would be back to number one because the Steelers were probably number one four or five years ago. But so I completely agree with you. I mean, a couple <laughs> things about that: the stability for the sake of stability thing is how you end up. And, and if you don't know, like this is a real thing. One of the worst things you can do as an owner, even though it sounds good, is to always put pressure on your team to have a plan at quarterback. And and sometimes it ends up and, and that rears oh, yeah. its head in more ways than you think. So not only do you draft Daniel Jones you see a little glimmer of hope and then you give Daniel Jones $160 million, half of the yeah. guarantee. Yeah. And you do that because you want to say you have a guy, right? Yeah. Uh, very similar situations all over the league. I remember when Alex Smith got that to huge deal. We love Alex Smith. We got the huge deal from Washington. And I was there and I was like, why didn't you guys just keep Kirk Cousins? Like it's not that different. And he no. could have signed him for a discount at the time. Like they, they bungled that. I'm talking about like go back in time four years from from that day like they they bungled like the last three years of Kirk Cousins but like there was a time where you could have conceivably signed Kirk Cousins to a long-term deal anyway now I was talking to somebody there and they were like well we just you know we need to sign Alex because of stability and it's like okay well you had stability and then you kick stability out anyway point being um and stability for the sake of stability can be bad the Kenny Pickett thing was bad but the reason they're in the top five they have and the, the the glamour around these names has confused us, and we now think this is a good quarterback competition. It's not. No, it's a no. bad quarterback competition. God awful. One of the worst. Ever. <laughs> Truly, one of the worst ever. And because of that, um, like we like this this quarterback play is going to be awful this year. No matter who plays, it's going to be awful. And yet, they're going to win a bunch of games. Because by the time this comes out, Greg Rosenthal, Mina, and I are doing, uh, we're drafting over-unders later today, oh, like wow. on Greg's yeah. show. We're doing like, we feel, I feel most confident that the Rams will go over or whatever. And I kept trying to pound Steelers under. And done. I just couldn't Can't do be it. done. Because they've got a top 10 offensive line. they got a nasty front seven. They've got sound defense. And it's like, okay, well, that's the model of a good franchise is when something is going wrong. So like... <laughs> There's an old thing in plane crashes now, like oh. now, like the the big the big plane crashes. When, I'm flying tomorrow. You know, where well, I'm about to tell you some good news. Is like they say when like a jetliner crashes that there's like 500 things you have to go wrong, and then if one of them goes right, that plane stays up. Stays in right? there, and like the Steelers are built like that. 
where it's like everything's gonna be fine they're yes. gonna stay in the air they may not be the their best you know they may not be the i what's it i'm I, you know what talking about airplanes now okay. is is a little fraught because the boeing situation but like they may not be the best plane in the world the Steelers, but they're gonna get you to your destination listen if the emergency exit door blows off uh, one person might get sucked out of the plane, but they're still going to land it. All right, and, and, and demand, two, demand they'll be halfway out the airplane door, demanding a trade to Philadelphia. My two final thoughts: the Tomlin slider. So, two, just depending on what's going on, like just do the Tomlin slider a little higher for the final eight games. It looks like we might actually miss the playoffs. Just push for maximum Tomlinness, and he does that and gets them to ten and seven. And yeah, I was just when you mentioned Daniel Jones, this is like two. This isn't really confirming your point or refuting your point. It's a totally pointless detail but about about fake stability. But I just yeah. can't get over the, the good Daniel Jones year. He had 15 touchdowns and 16 starts yeah. passing touchdowns. And yeah, that's not the kind of stability we need. It's because Even the Steelers they all wanted, aim higher than that. They all wanted their own. Everybody got euphoric around the Josh Allen thing where everybody got to throw the receipts in everybody's face. And everybody yes. in the Giants fandom and front sure. office wanted that for Daniel Jones, even though they didn't even draft him. I'm not even kidding. This happened to me with Carl Banks did this they to did me the on the Giants. I wish I were kidding. Carl Banks what? kept Giants receipts on me. And this is not a joke. Because <laughs> uh, he was extremely upset one year about my Joe Judge coach rankings. I mm. frankly thought it was too high. I had him like 22nd the year before he got yeah. fired. Uh, what did he do in like two games in a row? Um, yeah, it's something like I can't remember even what the impetus was for the receding. Yeah, but they were furiously printing CVS style receipts of like nine negative Joe Judge facts that I had. Oh and at some God. point, I was wrong. Carl Banks got in my face on X, the social media platform formerly known as Twitter. All right, and, what's uh, number four? We got to speed this up, or else we're going to do a four-hour podcast. Kansas what's City Chiefs. Four? They're just yeah. the Chiefs. I they would three. be. They'd be number one, but they're hurt by the fact that they don't give their players comfortable chairs or good weights. Apparently. Oh, yeah. As judged by the NFLPA survey, it's really the only thing. I forgot. I should, have I should have checked that before ranking it. I didn't do that. You sounds like you did your homework. No, I'm, I, Steve, I I'm a not. Steve Spurrier of this podcast. I just <laughs> put on my glasses and just started ranking. I checked one ranking just because I remembered that they were like dead last. And it was because yeah. literally like, yeah, the chairs in the locker room are real bad. No, it was because Clark Hunt promised them a new locker That's room right. and just ghosted them apparently. He promised them like good beanbag chairs. Like we can get 50 beanbag chairs from the lemonade stand them and sitting in storage, bring them to the locker room. Not everyone will yeah. get one, but almost everyone will get one. Then he didn't do it. Yeah, didn't do it. <laughs> didn't do it. Um, So <laughs> they handle most of their business. They traded Tyreek Hill for a value when they can't handle the business, when they know it's going to get too expensive. The Chris Jones thing sucked, but they got it under control and then won a damn Super Bowl earlier than uh, other teams might have when, when somebody's drawing that hard, hard of a bargain. And the biggest thing for me, and this is what I was talking about earlier, but the organizations never change. I really do feel like the Chiefs changed. Like I'm sorry, like you, I, the beanbag chair is notwithstanding. But like, I think the Chiefs were in this great middle of teams yeah. that weren't going to go above and beyond on most things, or be aggressive in trading first round picks or spending in cash or whatever it is. And then they saw Patrick Mahomes, and they were like, "Okay, well, we have to become a model organization now. Like that's we have no choice." Yes, and yes. like I don't mean I, I'm not trying to be flippant, but like that's what happens. Yeah. Like you have to grow, and and there's a lot of franchises. Like, I'm really worried about the Bengals right now, and they're not in my bottom five because Joe Burrow stay, is... Stay is, tuned. Stay tuned. I was taking that. them out, but, like, I'm really worried about T. Higgins and even Jamar Chase. And, again, Scorpion and the Frog. Like, Mike Brown is like, oh, guess who owns the team? It's me, buddy. Me. Me. And, like, <laughs> Clark Hunt is a significantly better owner than Mike Brown ever was, but I'm just saying that, that they mold themselves into being a significantly better franchise because they knew the opportunity that they had. Andy Reid wouldn't work for a franchise that is that is bad. My final thought on the Chiefs, too, is it's been for decades where but, they value stability, but not just for stability's I, sake. Like, they I, took yeah. Marty Schottenheimer to his logical extreme. They let right. Dick Vermeil do his thing. You know, they, they didn't wait wait around on Herm Edwards or Todd Haley. Hey. Uh, they want stability, but yeah, it's not just going to be like yeah. there's no like weird like Todd Bowles getting to go five and eleven yeah. three years in a row, or Norv Turner getting to go eight and yeah. eight six, yeah. seven years in a row. Stability, it. but not just for stability's sake. Whatever's going on in New Orleans right now, 
Hey, uh, who's your number three? The Eagles. And here's where we're getting mm-hmm. into, I feel like, truly good two. franchises. I had them at two. Because the Eagles have seamlessly transitioned, you know, from Andy Reid to yeah. Doug Peterson to now Big Dom. And, like, uh, so I was really hoping you'd laugh at that. I had nothing if you didn't laugh at that. <laughs> so desperately needed you to laugh at that joke. You had you had a, a big, big block letters in your notes that said laugh line. Yes, Hold yes, for applause. Yes. Uh, I had nothing if you did not laugh at Big Dom. But, no, oh, Je- well. Jeffrey Lurie, the same deal. Like, too, he had Mr. Stability, Andy Reid. But then when it got too mediocre, when the, this change of scenery was clearly needed. And gave him, and gave him the exact right length of a leash yes too. exactly exactly yeah it was not too long not too short even though he knew he was probably still gonna be a good nfl coach sometimes change is just neat especially in a league this closed loop system of league 32 teams you know there's that's all there is there's not more coming there's not more going there's a hard salary cap you almost don't know how yeah cre- create variance or like you My just heart. get stuck on the wrong track for song next thing you know it's been 24 years and you haven't made a super cut. so yeah okay. jeffrey lurie knows uh when when to push the issue Who's the 24-year team we were talking about? I don't know. Uh, what did I even say? Okay. <laughs> uh, who, like, uh, I mean, the Steelers, unfortunately, might be getting I mean, kind of close yeah, to that. Yeah, kind of close enough. to but, that. Um, the Eagles, to me, if you want to hang them on anything, it'd be their, their treatment of coaches, where they just fire them whenever they please. But I also feel like that's the tax you pay for having a really good roster and a really good front office and a bunch of talent. Like, if you were given... If somebody was like, if, you, if you're a golf mm-hmm. coordinator and you're like, hey, you're going to be given this roster and these lines, and normally the line, you know, to losing, losing Jason Kelsey will be important, but like, you're going to be given this offensive line, this front seven, these skill guys. But the deal is, if you suck, like for one year, we're probably going to fire you. They'd be like, yeah, okay, well, I'll take that deal. But I feel like if they, if they didn't pursue fake stability. Like Doug Peterson, I feel like he's kind of lost it. And like Nick Sirianni too, he could be losing it. Doug you wouldn't think... fire coaches, right? Or, or no, yeah, he would like not fire plan. any coaches. Yeah, and they didn't even... like his plan. Sirianni, you could argue, is getting one year too many already. So I don't know. Hey, if they're would necessarily... you fire coaches? Like, would it mean if I own the team? Yeah. No, 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 no. If you were the head coach, and people oh. were like, you got your 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 assistants, Denny, and it's and kind Kyle. of weird because most of the time, you know, uh, it probably isn't this guy's fault at all. But I don't know. You got to be ruthless. It's like being in a, an administration. Like, listen, the public, the health and human services secretary, isn't why this is happening. But we just got to throw them to the wolves. I wonder. I, people can tweet me on this. I wonder who has had has thrown the most people under the bus, and it's like worked out. Because there's always like the head coach who fires like four people, and then they get fired the next year or like halfway through the season. I'm wondering if there's anybody who's ever like, all right, I'm getting rid of all of my best friends. And by the way, I'm going to continue to crush it. I, I wonder if there's a counterfactual there. But Sirianni is trying to be work. guy. Siri, it, it does I, never. I don't think he liked those guys. Like it wasn't his friends. No, no, no. It doesn't yeah. ever work though. You're actually his only sure. friend is Frank Reich, who he fought Colts fans over. If you See, remember, you're, you're forgetting Big Dom too. Big Dom. Big Dom. Big Dom. Big Dom might be the guy who's in charge of. Uh, of firing head coaches. That's what I'm telling you. That's the Big Dom era for the Eagles. We the just don't know it yet. We just don't um, know yet. Big Dom is apparently they were they showed a thing the other day of of they're like raffling off meet Big Dom a training camp. It's, he does if anyone deserves it sincerely, it's Big Dom. I do think that we <laughs> glossed over the fact that he was suspended because he was trying to confront a 49ers player, and the head of security is not in charge of security against the other team. Debo should not have been there. That's all I can say. Debo should not have been there. Big Dom. Was it Trey Greenlaw? No, was it Trey? I thought it was Debo for some reason. No, it I thought was, it was Trey Greenlaw. It was, it was someone. Yeah, and they, they, out. They, see, it doesn't, the person doesn't even matter. It was just the principal. They shouldn't have been there. Yeah. And Big Dom, um, he runs this organization. He's not going to let that stand. Okay, so my number four hasn't been named yet. Who's your number two? The Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, that's my number four. I assumed... I feel like the owner spends most of his time in hypersleep, and the only time he ever comes out, it's to say Palm something Beach. Like, I think he's down in Palm yeah, Beach, yeah, chomping yeah, yeah. on a cigar. He comes out and says something like vaguely controversial every eight or nine years. He's like, "Well, I'm not doing that again," and he goes back into hypersleep. And I, how, if you can start a dynasty with Brian Billick yeah. and then segue it into Joe Flacco somehow, yeah, I, mean, I know Ozzie Newsom was a huge part of that. 
Like they are doing something right. <laughs> no one pulls off transitions better than the Ravens. And the, yeah, they're just like, and to have an identity in the modern NFL, to be like the defense team for like yeah. seriously three decades, it's so hard to have an identity in the salary cap era. And to like have an identity and all these successful transitions, the Ravens aren't well, elite. So much of it is, it's not luck. It's it's advanced planning and like not planning. Well, I'll give you an example. I talked about this was so like a couple weeks ago, but like I was there about a month ago, last month, and they were saying somebody there who knows the team was like, you know, we're worried about the brain drain on the defensive side of the ball, but Kyle Hamilton is like developing into this guy who who just runs himself. And he might like everything. It's like the Seinfeld thing. It's like, oh, I, I gave away a hundred bucks and I found it in my jacket. Like they're just even Steven. There. And <laughs> yeah. like, it's just, everything seems to work out for them. It's like, oh, we lost Mike McDonald and, and a couple other defensive assistants. Guess what? We have the new best safety in football. Surprise. <laughs> they're just one of the only teams that fully acknowledge the realities of the salary cap era too, which kind of stinks because you have to make awful, like very unsentimental decisions, but Bill Belichick, of course, the ultimate one year too early instead of one year too late. The guys, literally the Ravens, are just that the Ravens don't give second contracts to players that even if they even if they eighty percent deserve it, they only give you the second contract if you hundred percent deserve it. And they just operate the way the collective bargaining agreement demands that you operate, and it's how they're mm-hmm. being successful. All right, I think we probably have the same number one unless there's unless Do you we? go off the board. Is it the Green Bay Packers? Yeah. The Green Bay Packers. Listen, my is thing it, on the pack- Packers is they don't have an owner. The, 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 your number, your two guys, your two top teams are the owner in Hypersleep, who's chomping on a cigar in Palm Beach at all times, yes, and the yes. team with the, the literal trust that does not have an owner. So here's what I do. Here's the deal with the Packers. You let the fans own a team one time, and they just go, <laughs> they just go, what if we never have a bad quarterback? Yeah. And like the fans are like, we should just never have a bad quarterback. Has anyone considered this? And like, no, yeah. we, we should try that. And then it works, and then you're the best franchise in the NFL. Let the You've fans do it. Have an amazing quarterback. Never have a bad one. You're the best franchise in the NFL. That's how it works. Why don't the Jets think about that? Hey, Why don't um, they? There's not much to say. Like, they plan ahead. They don't make rash decisions. Um, They're always weirdly right. Like, they promoted Brian Gutenkunst everybody was like well Ron Wolf's kid was there and like five other guys were there and all these guys were up for the job turns out he's awesome turns out that he's right about everything and like seriously everything this thing where like maybe because they're so patient there's just like a weird um but there was a Twitter are you familiar with the, the soccer team Arsenal yeah. oh yes oh of okay. course and the so the there evil, was a funny, evil owner there was a funny Twitter meme the other the other year, uh, last year, because they always are leading. They're not always like in recent history. They've always um, they've led the the Premier League title and then they've lost it in the last month. It's always top of the table on December thirty first. Yeah. Yes, and then I believe they lost it two in a row, and I think they were in the mix last year. And there was a viral tweet last year that said, "Why argue with an Arsenal fan when you can just wait?" <laughs> and like. I kind of feel like a good the exact opposite is true with the Packers, where like Packers fans just should never should just stop talking because they're <laughs> always the team always gets proven right, and it's like why am I arguing with with Vikings fan for twenty sixty nine when Oops. I can just wait two years and we're gonna have five unbelievable studs like everybody <laughs> on, as wide receivers, um, everybody talks about best player available and you're supposed to do best player available. Then the Packers did it. And everybody was like, no, not like that. Don't take not a like quarterback. That. I totally don't take agree. a court. Don't know. I don't like best player available. And so like, they just do things the way you're supposed to do it. And then everybody is like, what the hell are you doing? And then they wait two years and it turns out the process was correct. The fans knew. And yeah, put up a banner in Lambo that just says, say less. Say less. Also, I don't want to hear from any Arsenal fans. I don't, don't, read too much into that little bit I did, okay? I'm traveling this week. I don't have time for this. Why should you bet with Caesar Sportsbook? Two words, Caesar's Rewards. Every bet brings you closer to the types of benefits only Caesar's can offer. Hotel stays, VIP experiences, sports and concert tickets, and more. It's not just an app, it's an empire. All right, <laughs> now the main event, the five worst. Five worst. Number five, Patrick. It's the Cincinnati Bengals. And I know that the Zoomers yeah. will remember 
nothing has really changed. It's still the Cincinnati <laughs> Bengals, and they get one good player every 20 years, and they're just kind of yeah. like, good luck, man. Like, uh, we're all rooting for you. And, like, if it works, it's amazing. And if it doesn't work, they're like, well, we got to wait 20 years till we get the number one overall pick again. And, you know, it kind of worked with Carson Palmer, but not really. Then they got locked into the fake stability, which was fine because they yeah. drafted okay. But they, they, they did not do free agency well the entire Marvin Lewis era. It's just like the ultimate, like, what did we learn here era of football? Yeah where it was the same Bengals. They just happened to have like a good coach. And now they just happen to have a good quarterback. And like, they still, they can't, you could argue it's quarterback's fault. They can't protect them. Right. They had the yeah. weapons, right. But now they're bungling the weapons. Uh, like the roster is really not that good. And there's, it's just kind of like, yeah, Joey. Uh, yeah. We're all, we're all thinking of you. And uh, yeah, you, <laughs> you do that. I'm going to sit here and not do anything different. Let's just see what you do. Young man. So, a couple notes on the Bengals. Number one is I feel very similar to the case in college that Bill Snyder is like the best college coach of all time because he took an unbelievably dreary program in Kansas State and turned them into like a perennial national title contender. And the way he does every yeah year. every same every every single Saturday. Yep. Every single Saturday from ninety four into ninety nine was a Missouri Kansas State game. Yes. They ended forty two to twenty. Or no, it was like um, it, was, it was always a thirty four to twenty one loss. And they would always get JUCOs, and they would get the easiest possible yes. non conference schedule, yes. and they would treat it like the preseason, which I think doesn't work anymore because Big Twelve no. teams need to make the playoffs. But like it used to be a very very good idea. So, um, all this to say, Marvin Lewis turning around the Bengals in the era he did it. I know is evidence that Marvin Lewis is like one of the best coaches of his era, but because he never won in the playoffs, which he shouldn't even have been in the playoffs relative to like no. the organization he was running. He was a stud and he doesn't get nearly the recognition he deserves. No, he was Belichick not getting a second chance before Belichick not getting a second yeah. chance. Like I yes. totally agree with your take on Marvin Lewis. And then it wasn't the same. Maybe he didn't want the second chance because like, he probably could have gotten another job if he wanted. Maybe I don't I didn't hear that buzz. No. I it's insane that, that he never got a second chance. Um, they're not on my list. I have uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars five. Listen, they're they're in the mix. They're always in the mix. <laughs> they weren't in the top five for me. That, so, the go ahead. Sorry. No. See, so the Jags. The thing. I maybe the reason I left them out of the bottom five is because unlike a lot of the teams in the bottom five, you can sense them like <laughs> desperately, palpably wanting to get out of the bottom yes. five, and they so, just can't. So, do it. so this is my unifying theory on ownership, which is there's three types of owners. Teams that want to win and do win. Teams that don't want to win and don't win. And sometimes they win, but they're not they're not going out of their way to win. Then there's a third group that wants to win but doesn't know how to win. Okay? I think that Jaguars, and I've defended them, the Jaguars are in that bucket, but they've also been in that bucket for 15 years. So... What are we doing exactly? Yes. What 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 are we doing? And the guy where they all dress like clowns, all the fans dress like clowns, so he would get fired. He's just still there and has full control. And yes. I don't think anything's getting better there. And they went out and they got free agents. I understand that, but I was surprised. I said on Mina's pod that the Colts were better, but just matter of factly, which is just sort of in a, as an aside, I was like, well, the Colts are better than the Jaguars. And all of Duval County came at me like I had said the dumbest thing in the world. Like I had said, J.J. McCarthy was a mega bust. And, um, I d oh, might be a mega bust. Mega, might be a mega bust. I didn't read it that way. Um, and I was just surprised at the level of confidence that, that there, that there, it, that exists there. And like, I know it's, it's lying season and everyone can kind of talk themselves into, into whatever this time of year, but I was surprised. Um, I just don't think there's a lot of talent there. No, and it's, yeah, it's true. They don't know how to fix it. They want to fix it so bad that they just always do the opposite. Mm -hmm. yeah, like it's classic. It's weird the two and like veering between extremes where they go the ultimate quick fix turnaround, like yeah. silver bullet solution in Urban Meyer to now like well no never mind we'll do the stability thing with Doug Peterson even yeah. though it's entirely unclear if Doug Peterson is actually still good. But and Trump like, Alke, it's the common denominator. He keeps yeah. doing it. Like yeah. he keeps. He's the guy waffling between the two extremes. The guy who uh, won and then decisively lost a power struggle with Jim Harbaugh might not be the one you want running your organization is kind of what you're saying. All right. 
Um, my number four is Chicago Bears. They did. Oh, listen, uh, the Chicago Bears have been the worst franchise's honorable mention every year, every year since 1994. And I totally agree that they could have made. In my, my opinion, and this might change. It's possible, Bears fans, that when we're talking about a franchise changing because of a generational player like the Chiefs, that maybe the Bears are in that mix. But I've never gotten the sense that they've gone out of their way to try to win football games. <laughs> no, no, they don't. The Bears don't care. They truly do not care. And even right now, where the first time ever appears they might care, where they got Caleb Williams, they, they're building a stadium. All they're doing, they're literally having public officials pray for their new stadium. They're literally, and, they're literally, they've got a franchise player, and they're literally releasing seven renderings per day yes, exactly. in different also in yeah. different it's honestly, it's honestly becoming a little bit like it, it, it's like a well-funded and stable version of the coyotes arena where every single yes, yes, yes. update i see is completely divorced from the last update i yes, saw so i know like there was one that was like all right we're good we're moving we're moving downtown we're gonna be right near the old soldier field here's the rendering and like a week later it was like Bears commit to Arlington Heights. So I was like, "What? I thought we just saw a thing." And then the yeah. next week, it's like, "Oh, another suburb has met with the Bears." And it's like, "What? What's going on here?" Yeah, the Bears say they they say to Grok, the Twitter uh, AI generator, <laughs> Grok, generate a stadium in Cicero, and right, generate so, Bear Stadium in Cicero. And, all right, long story short, I, I don't want to shortchange the Bears, and they're about to go on a, a real run here. But <laughs> when you have the kind of quarterback numbers and offensive numbers that the Bears have, like the, the the passing records that are from like post, like a couple years after World War II, some of the records are from, um, I'm sort of God. No, no, it's like, very true. You write a 4,000 yard passer. Caleb Williams should rewrite the rookie, their, their franchise records, let alone rookie records, like very, very, very quickly. When you have that kind of ineptitude, it's because you never went out of your way to build a good offensive football team, which has been the name of the game since 2009. You can do the 85 Bears nostalgia. That's fine. But the way to win is offensive football, and that's been true for 15 years, and you've never put anything together for it. And well, that, that, to me, and like the, they've, they've been wrong on coaches. They hired Mark Tressman. They ha- hired uh, the John Fox era, which didn't seem real. No, like, it wasn't. Just show me if you if the Bears have been the top franchise. Just just tell me how. Just it's tell not, me how. It's not Bears football. Having a good offense is not Bears football, so we will not do it. And here's a new stadium rendering in Naperville. <laughs> Naperville, folks, and you know, might any another Gary Naperville. Indiana, fan? I believe there was a Gary Indiana thing. Like there 20 is. Years there's ago an Indiana before. one. I'm sure there's a Bolingbrook yeah. one. There's an East Troy, Wisconsin one, probably. You know what they should do? You know how, like, the World Cup, just to draw up interest, will be like, this is our stadium watch list, and it's always got, like, yes, Baton yes. Rouge, Louisiana on it, yes, and then, like, yes, LSU yes. fans would be like, that'd be so sick to see Italy play in Baton yes, Rouge, and it's yes. like, yeah, I know that's gonna happen, guys. Like, the Bears should just release a, like, a stadium future watch list, and just list all the suburbs in Chicago to get everybody fired up. Ooh, St. Louis, like, that's that seems kind of far. <laughs> Not sure if that's really a Chicago York, suburb. New Jersey? Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, who's your Who's your number four? Just the Carolina Panthers. And just oh, when they retire okay. David Tepper's jersey, uh, the name on the back will just say "Excuse me, young man," and the number on his jersey. He'll insist that they put to make his net worth his number, and it'll just say 22.4 billion dollars on David yeah. Tepper's jersey. And uh, David Tepper seems more. Like concerned, like about proving like non-existent points in his head to like an HVAC contractor or something. Like I don't yeah. know why they have this half-built team facility that is abandoned. Which, to be fair, that's that's what we do too. That's true. I mean, it is, proving think, non-existent points that no one else is arguing sure. is is the backbone of our existence. It's important to never let the HVAC company get the final word. <laughs> but I would just maybe instead have a good NFL franchise. And David Tepper seems to have absolutely zero interest in. Doing he, he is the new, the, the tyrannical, he wants to win more than he wants to live. And instead, the same thing that makes him live kills him in the end. That's what's going Man. on with David Tepper and the Panthers, I think. Classic. Um, They're my number two. Um, They were number one with the bullet, and I'm sure they were number one with the bullet for you, at least last year. Oh, yeah. They had been. Um. 
I think David Tepper wants to win. I think Dan Morgan wants to win. People in their front office want to win. Dave Canales is like a weirdly sound hire. Because you really only need one thing, which is to, to maximize the quarterback and just see what you have, or else sign Dak Prescott next year. And like Dave Canales authored the best turnaround in the NFL for a quarterback last year. And so like I'm weirdly this is the only team on this list where I'm like, hey now, we got something going here. We got something going. But how many different times did Daniel Snyder think he had something going? Like, listen, I don't know how he got Joe Gibbs. But to I come never, out of retirement. I never thought that was. I never. None not of that even, was ever not real. even Joe Gibbs. Not Joe Gibbs. Even. I mean, the RG three thing was real. The RG three Mike Shanahan was real. That should have been. That real. was real. That, that was should, real for one it was year. Real. It should have been real for five. Well, this uh, he's going to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. Or is that right? It no. doesn't matter. People he'll got snatch it. defeat from the jaws of victory. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's going to be his thing. Did you feel like we should have ranked the commanders just out of, I didn't do it, but like, first of all, they haven't done anything like to prove they're a top franchise. Yeah. Like I almost gave them like a, like a lifetime achievement award, ranked them five. I did them third. I, I didn't put them first. They're still on your list? They're still, oh, they're on the list. How can they not be oh. on the list? They're Listen. my other, they're, they're, they're in the mix for me, but go ahead. No, when your new day phase includes Cliff Kingsbury. And the coach from the twenty eight to three game, like for, it's, it's not a new day when it's Dan Quinn yeah. and Cliff Kingsbury. Like your first coaching search somehow resulted in like a very public back and forth with the Detroit Lions assistant. Yeah. Like your logo is like placeholder art from the Madden well, two thousand two created team generator. You, like, you missed where not, you left out when they flew to go get Ben Johnson and then he said no, and then they pretended they weren't there to interview really? Ben Johnson. Uh, yeah. Exactly, and they that's what I'm like, saying. They were like, hey, we were actually here to interview Aaron Glenn. And all the beat writers were like, Commanders just landed, contingent for Aaron Glenn. And it's like, I don't know if they're there for Aaron Glenn, man. They were never there for I don't Aaron know. Glenn. No. It, but so like, told Aaron Glenn they were there for Aaron Glenn? I don't know. No, they did interview can, him. They interviewed you can, him. You can take the Daniel Snyder out of the commanders, or you can take the commander. The same, you know. The yeah, thing. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Um, yeah. How many different phrases are you going to just be slightly off on in this episode? <laughs> what do you call that uh, when you um, when you butcher uh, like an idiom? Uh, I what, forget. What is going on with you over there? You just can't get anything. <laughs> you just, okay. just, no. We're just gonna we're gonna be like a coach. <laughs> we're just gonna do what you can do well. Just get simple sentences out for the rest of the episode. But uh, anyways, the commanders will forever be haunted by him. And 70 years it's going to take to ex- exercise the Daniel Snyder demons. All right, so they're number three for you. They're number three. Okay, my, my number three is the Arizona Cardinals. That's a great one. They betrayed my city too, um, so they're actually number one in my heart. After so the rain. they're very similar to the Bengals in the sense that there's just anything positive that happens is despite them. Despite what the organization is trying to do. They're not trying to lose, but they're just going to kind of roll out and put a team out there. That's why I like oh, Kurt Warner's a miracle worker. No. Bruce Aarons is a miracle worker. That 2015 team. I have Mandela affected a Super Bowl appearance for that team. Have you? <laughs> not, not quite, but uh, yeah. They just no. seem so good. <laughs> that Like the fact that they just, they just started being bad at some point. Remember the rank 2016, they just, just stopped winning. Yes, and no. I just and nobody was ready for it. No, no, no. Just, nobody no. was ready for it. No, everybody was like, "Here come the Cardinals" because they got the NFC title game. <laughs> they lost, and then and they just that was one of the teams where it was it was like the end of the Departed, where it's like, "Oh, you're in an elevator. <laughs> I got shot. It's over, right?" And so uh, nobody was ready for the for the downfall of the Cardinals. Anyway, hired Cliff Kingsbury. Jonathan Gannon's better than Cliff Kingsbury, but I don't think anybody's going to confuse him for Bill Belichick anytime soon. You've not gotten the coach right. There just seems to be an inordinate amount of fires that they have to put out constantly. Yeah. Oh, Kyler yeah. plays too many video games. Cliff moved to Thailand. You know, like I, the, the whole thing, he moves out after he got fired. But like, also, I've always thought this about the Cliff Kingsbury thing. Cliff was going to be the OC at. USC. This was before he was the head coach. Then he gets hired as the head coach of the Cardinals. Why did you just hire him as OC? He would have taken it. He was going to be an OC in college, not a head coach. He probably would have taken it. Did you ask he him? Would've, 
Oh no, he would have taken it. For absolutely, one hundred percent would have taken it. Would have taken it. It would have been quite right, the anyway. life raft for Cliff Kingsbury. But you know, do that, Cliff. It's all about where we're we're not going to squander this opportunity. We can leave nothing to chance. Cliff Kingsbury uh, can't just be the play caller. We can't risk losing Cliff Kingsbury. You know, even though he was just fired, like the risk of losing Cliff Kingsbury was too great. Were he just offensive coordinator? Cliff and that's Kingsbury. How you become, that's how you become the second worst or the third worst. Cliff Kingsbury had Patrick Mahomes, and he didn't win that much. No. Lost more than he won. It. Lost more than he, he won, I believe. He he lost more than he won. I'm look. Is, was Mahomes' last year 2016? Right. They went five oh. and seven. Man, oh man. What are we doing? That's no. You're doing Arizona Cardinals football. Is what you're doing. Then he went. I the the 11 and six year. I've caught kind of memory hold in twenty in twenty twenty one. I've I've given Bruce Arians a retroactive Super Bowl appearance. I'm taking away the Cliff Kingsbury eleven win season. Um, all right, who's your? Uh, have you not done two and one? Two and one. Should I just do them both? Um, uh, no, do two first. It's it's the Chargers. The, the there's two teams for me, and it's this. Yeah. I feel like all I really need to say for the Chargers is dignity, health, sports park. Um. You know, they finally, they make the ultimate, we're turning yeah. this around higher in Jim Harbaugh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now their summer injury list tweets are all this, like, the 15 greatest players in franchise history. Like, wow, I didn't yeah. even know LaDainian Tomlinson was still on the Chargers, but he has a Aaron. groin injury <laughs> and isn't practicing right now. And it's, yeah. it's like they built SoFi Stadium on, like, Don Coriel's grave or something. Like, I don't yeah. know, they have disturbed some malignant spirit, and they will never be free of it. Like, the oh. commander's... And Daniel Snyder, I just don't know how the Chargers ever get rid of this Chargers coach. And, too, they're the most broke team in the NFL, despite somehow yeah, being in that's LA. Yeah, that's the big yeah. thing. I was going to say, you mentioned like curses. No, it's not a curse. It's just that they're, they just don't spend a lot of money. They had like cash flow problems. That's one, one of the reasons they had to move. They like, remember the thing about like, I think the Rams, there's been some reporting that the Rams like hate them because they just undercut them on. Ticket prices. Because a bunch of people in LA who are like, I just, I don't have a team affinity. I'm just a fan of football. Like, if there was a, if I could easily get to, to, um, the Meadowlands, or I can't because it's in Jersey, but if I could get there conceivably, I would like get cheap season tickets to the Jets. Well, I, without a doubt, I'd be like, hell yeah. I like football. I'm a football guy. So the Chargers undercut the Rams in pricing by a significant amount. And the Rams were like, what the hell is going on? And then they only sold like 28,000 seats. They also played in a soccer stadium for a little bit. They did. The, the, the Dignity did. Health Sports Park. That's, gonna, that's all you really need to say about the Chargers. That's um, it. That's um, all you need to say. They're not on my list, partially because I think Jim Harbaugh is going to turn it around. So do we have the top? Do we have Do we have the same number one? Uh, you're, you, you cut out on me. It's the it's the New York Football Jets. Did Let's you mute, did you mute yourself? I was here's the deal, Kevin. I made keep this in Flynn. Keep this in Flynn. He's trying to to name the worst franchise in football, and he himself has randomly out of nowhere muted himself in the middle of in minute forty six of a podcast. Who's who's bad here? Is it you or the Jets? Well, I I'm very bad because I'm currently the worst analyst in football because I'm uh, <laughs> desperately late for an event I'm supposed to host uh, for one. Oh, do you have to go? I, I, I can't, not before talking about the Jets. I'll tell you that. Okay. Uh, not okay. before talking about the Jets. Because right. the Jets, I mean, I, where to even begin? They're all three kinds of bad ownership. I feel yeah. like the bad owner archetypes you laid out, they somehow are all encompassing. Um, no team ever has a more, but it might work for us, attitude. <laughs> uh, their best two centuries in the entire set, the best two seasons of this entire century. Yeah. They got second place. You know, their yeah. best season of the past decade. They were a non-playoff team that went ten and six, and somehow resulted in a Ryan Fitzpatrick extension. Like they're they're just a special kind of bad that they wouldn't be the worse than Daniel Snyder, but no. like they want they 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 are all three of their your archetypes I, into one, I, and they have no competition for the worst franchise in the NFL. I would be more, um, but you have a counter argument, baby. My counter argument is: uh, Have you considered they have a forty-year-old coming off an Achilles this year? Who has not played for two years? I have, yes. Uh, you know, last real football snap, yeah. it, it, too, it was his worst season since his rookie year and has not played in two years and is the savior. That's a very good situation for the New York Jets. Very, very good situation for the New York Jets. Bye, buddy.
<laughs> Who's your worst? Who's your worst? I got to hear your Them. Worst. Them. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, uh, why, though? Because I know you've got a few Clark Clarkian yeah. reasons. Look. Um, first of all, like, there's the stat that the Colts have won more AFC East titles than the Jets, um, which is astounding. How is that? You mentioned it. Any spike in success has been extremely temporary and undone mostly by themselves. The biggest thing for me is they listen to the ownership and listen to the media too much, way too oh, yeah. much. And they're always like, it's like the baseball. It's like how, you know, remember old school baseball would always be like, well, the papers say we got to get a big bat at the deadline. So that's what we're going to do. <laughs> they're the only team that operates like that. We're like, oh man! They say we gotta, we gotta get a Le'Veon Bell's available. Yes, we gotta, man. we gotta sell some tickets. Yes, yes. They operate like the old scouts in Moneyball. So right, it's so, and it's, it's somehow always the old scouts. We have to get whoever has been starting a quarterback for the Green Bay Packers these past fifteen years. Like we sell a lot the, of tickets, especially it's the early only in the thing season. that's going to save this team and turn this organization around is it. If it's been 13 years, don't get them. If it's been 15 years, get them from the Green Bay Packers. That's how you turn around this franchise. All right, this was perfect. Thanks, Pat. Thank you. Always my pleasure, Kevin. Thank you so much. 